Hi guys, Lucy aka The Watchbox Diaries here and welcome to my channel. If you're new around here, hi, I'm Lucy and I'm just a girl who likes to talk about watches. With that in mind, let's talk about some watches. If you ask a kid to draw a watch, it's going to be round. It is the standard shape for a watch. But what if you don't want standard? What if you want something a little bit different? Now, I could just say the Cartier Tank because it is the perfect non-round watch and there are a million variations of it. But for entertainment purposes and research purposes, I have decided to not have it in any of my options today. Okay, so the price ranges are 1,000, 5,000, 25,000, 50,000 and unlimited. There are two options for each of these categories and I could probably do about a thousand of these videos with different options every single time. Get through this video, get through my selections and then let me know your thoughts at the end in the comment section. So first up in the £1,000 category is a watch that I have personally reviewed and completely fell in love with. I have been a bit cheeky with the price straight off the bat. Um, it is ever so slightly over that £1,000 mark, but they are regularly reduced, so you can definitely get it under retail. That is the Seiko Willard, retailing at £1,050. This ticks so many boxes. You've got loom, you've got colour options, you've got 200 metres of water resistance, which just makes this pretty much the perfect go anywhere, do anything, take it on holiday and not have to worry about it kind of watch. At 42.7 millimeters, it should be too big for itty bitty risk committee members, but it is not because of that glorious case shape. In my opinion, a strong start. Option number two should come as no surprise. It has to have a spot in a non-round watch roundup. It is of course, the Hamilton Ventura, which retail for roughly £850. For those who love Elvis and those who are major movie buffs, this hits both of those spots. If you're into both, then two birds, one stone people. Elvis wore it in Blue Hawaii. Elvis is just cool. And it also featured in Men and Black. So again, hitting some movie sweet spots there. This is a truly unique case shape and definitely a conversation starter. If you're into watches, you're going to know what this is straight away. And if you're not into watches, you're going to notice that it comes in a variety of sizes. So there's a Ventura for everybody. The majority of these are quartz, but there are a couple of mechanical options available if you prefer. First up in the £5,000 category is the Cartier Santos Dumont, which retails in steel at £3,750. If you want the bimetal, it's slightly over the category at £5,400. Now, I said I wasn't going to choose the tank. I said nothing about not having a Cartier in this. You have to admit that Cartier is pretty much the go-to for anything non-round and the Santos Dumont is just beautiful. This is a design that I truly believe will never go out of style. It will always be a classic. And with it being quartz, you're not gonna have to set it every single day. Is this watch the best value or the most mind blowing? Mm, probably not. But is it incredibly beautiful and just giving off understated elegance? Absolutely. Now, if you're looking for something a little less mainstream and a little bit more independent, then my next option should please you. It is the Nomos Tetra, which retails from around £1,800 to £3,300, depending on your selection. These are simple square dialed watches from independent German watchmakers, Nomos Glasuta, and as Huey Louie once sang, it is hip to be square. Nomos provide a number of different dial variations and some super fun colorways. 30 meters of water resistance might not be a go anywhere, do anything watch, but these will definitely be a statement piece on the wrist. They are super thin, super wearable, and for those of you who are mechanical watch people, they come in either automatic or manual wind, depending on your preference. 
My first choice is the Girard Perigo Laureato. Price range is anything from 10,000 to around about 22,000. This is another watch that I managed to review and absolutely fell in love with, so it kind of has to go in this selection. The variety of dials, complications, and sizing provide a wide range of options, meaning there's probably one that you will love in their catalogue. If you're looking for something that's kind of like a Rolex Daytona vibe, but you want it to be a little bit more left field, I think the Laureato is such a good option. They look good on the bracelet, they look good on a strap, which basically just makes it a another perfect go anywhere, do anything, take it on holiday kind of watch. Another option that I don't think will come as a surprise to any of you really, and that is the Volgari Octo Finissimo, because it's just freaking cool. They retail from 12,000 to about 25,000, so depends on your preference and how much you want to spend. Personally, I would go for titanium or the blue dark, it's a very nice blue, but I don't think you could go wrong with any of the selections because they're all fantastic watches and, as I've mentioned before, super freaking cool. Also, they are super thin. Like, how? How do they do it? Blows my mind. There's something silly like 5.15 millimeters thick. Hopefully, if you have seen one of these in person, you will understand my sheer excitement. Not only is it that thin, but there's also an open case back so you can see all of the movement just flat on it. So within this category, I would go full titanium or blue, but money was no object. They do a full sandblasted gold, which reminds me of the Caramac bar. I saw it in person, managed to try it on, and completely fell in love with it and it was absolutely beautiful. Swiftly moving on to the £50,000 category, and if you have ever watched any of my videos before, or if you follow me on Instagram, this first option will surprise none of you. It is, of course, the Vacheron American 1921, which retails for £32,500 or £38,900 if you want the larger size. Now I will say that these have jumped up in price massively because when they first got released, I swear they were about £25,000 new and they're now 32 and a half. I know inflation has happened, but that's quite a big jump. Nowhere near enough though to stop me needing one in my life. If I had the money, I would be straight down to the AD, throw in my... A suitcase full of cash would be much more effective, but I'm down my car and being like, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me the watch. Give me, give me, give me, give me. I will love this watch always and forever. The classic with a twist is it's literally just the epitome of classic with a twist. And it is everything. Every inch of this watch is so beautifully made. It's an iconic, unique design, but still has that level of timeless class to it. I will not have a bad word said about my baby. People can have their opinions about every other watch, that's absolutely fine, but this watch, I will have no bad words. So again, for those of you who have watched my videos before or follow me on Instagram, my second option will definitely come as a surprise to you because it came as a surprise to me, to be honest. This option is the Breguet Reine de Naples, which retails from around 28 to 40,000 pounds, depending on your preference. This watch is everything that I probably shouldn't like, but have a weird obsession with. It is covered in diamonds, there are pink dial variations, and tips slightly more into the jewelry category than watch category than I would normally ever choose, but somehow I'm still really drawn to it. My absolute favourite from the range though was a limited run they did, I think back in 2021, called The Beating Heart. Now this has a variable length rotating heart to indicate the minutes, while the hours are displayed by a disc reveal in the centre of the dial. Their Mother of Pearl and their Moon Phase options are also amongst my favourites and they are in their current range. 
I love a moon phase, even though it's literally the most irrelevant complication. They're also just really pretty. Do you know what I would love to see? I would love to see a man rocking the heck out of one of these watches. I think that would just be so freaking cool. Okay, so we're on to unlimited, unlimited funds now. This could have gone anywhere, but I had to pick two and I'm gonna do it people. I am going to pick one of the very few Richard Mill watches that I actually like. I'm gonna pick their Bonbon range, the 0703, which retails for $153,000. I'm not a huge fan of the Richard Mill Flex. They aren't particularly aesthetically pleasing for me. And the majority of them don't give me that warm horological glow that I get from looking at a beautiful, well-made, innovative movement. This watch is just fun. Size-wise, they are 29.9 by 22 millimeters, which seems pretty stealthy for a Richard Mille. They are grade five titanium with a ceramic suite in the center, and they are limited to just 30 pieces. Okay, so my last option is the ultimate watch. When they first released this and I read about it, my mind was completely blown. It is the JLC Hybris Mechanica Calibre 185, which retails for 1.35 million euros. I did say unlimited funds. So when I talked about that horological glow from seeing beautiful craftsmanship, this is what I mean. It is the first reverse so quadriptic and it was released at the 2021 Watches and Wonders and it must have blown everyone's minds. It has four faces and around 800 parts to it. Well, let me talk you through. So face one, we'll start simple. Hours, minutes, seconds. Flying tourbillon. Perpetual calendar with day, date, month, year, leap year, and day night indicator. Moving on to phase two, we have a minute repeater and a jump hour and minutes. Phase three has the northern hemisphere moon phase and three lunar cycles. And finally, on phase four, we have the southern hemisphere moon phase. Like, how do you fit so many complications? in one little watch. That is it. That is my non-round watch roundup done. Now, I could have chosen so many different watches. Maybe I'll do another video in the future. But I wanna know what you guys would have picked for each of the price ranges. Let me know in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed my horological ramblings and you wanna support my channel, then make sure you feed those algorithm gremlins and do the youtube -y things. Give it a like, make sure you're subscribed, comment, and if you wanna be notified of my upcoming videos, you just gotta turn on the little bell and YouTube will do its thing. Until next time though, bye.